Hi ENFPs, this is Eric Thor and today we're talking about extrovert and intuitive feeling perceiving type and how you can enter into a state of flow. Now, if you think you're an ENFP, you'll probably respond very well to these five tips and insights. Number one, as an ENFP, I'd suggest work with the 20-80 principle. That means 20% of the time do things that you really don't like to do. 80% of the time do things that you really do need and love to do. So 20% of the time you can dedicate to introverted sensing, your least liked cognitive function, and 80% of the time you can spend on what you love to do, extroverted intuition, your most beloved function. It's 20% of the time, preferably in the morning, get rid of necessary chores. That means schedule 20% of your daily time to your chores and duties and responsibilities, things you know are important but boring or tedious. Get them out of the way early in the morning, as early as possible, so you can start off the rest of your day free from guilt. Introverted sensing guilt is a flow killer. That means if you have unresolved chores and duties in the back of your head that you know you need to deal with, so preferably get it done early in the morning and be realistic with yourself. Be realistic about what you can expect from yourself. That means if you schedule too many chores in and you can't finish more than half of them, you're going to feel guilty about that and you're going to feel unnecessary guilt about that. So what I want you to do is make a realistic expectation of how much do I think I'll be able to get rid of? How much do I realistically think I'll be able to do? And get rid of the rest. The important thing is you can at least start off on a good note. So do the necessary things, the things that will get you structure and order and security so that you can go on with your life. Flow hack number two. As an ENFP, I suggest be very careful with how you use your extroverted thinking. You know, extroverted thinking might feel great because when you use it, you feel like you're doing something good for society. You feel like I'm a contributing, effective citizen. I am useful. I am uh, worthwhile. I mean something. I matter to the world. However, when you do these things, you'll find that you detach from your own emotions and your own needs and your own feelings. Be very careful with how often you engage in extorted thinking. Note this, the slow numbing effect of overuse of extorted thinking. Note this, that if you use extorted thinking too much, you'll feel cut off from yourself. You'll feel like you don't know why you do things. You'll feel that you are living purely based on your persona, your mask, and how you want to appear to the world. So through this, Extroverted thinking is something ENFPs only do to get approval from other people, so to get approval from society. That means introverted feeling is what you need to do in order to make sure that you can feel self-approval, self-acceptance, and self-love. If you overuse extroverted thinking, you'll find yourself loving yourself less and being more concerned with others. What do they think about me? What do they want from me? What do they expect from me? These kind of questions will cut you from, what do I expect for myself? What do I value? And what do I want for myself? So let me first tell you about my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Eric Thor. On Patreon, you can select your tier level and how much you want to support my channel with. As a supporter, you get full access to my content, premium videos, and all kinds of benefits. I also offer typing applications and coaching. So check out the Patreon page and enjoy the rest of my video. This brings us to flow hack number three, and that is value and spend time on yourself. That means check your intentions, check your cognitive functions, and check your thought process. What are your thoughts and expectations and values with everything you do? Make sure that you never make decisions thoughtlessly. Make sure that you always consider your own feelings before you do things. Make sure that you are able to be conscious and aware and mindful of your decisions and actions in every situation. Now, this level of self-consciousness will feel uncomfortable at first. It will be like carrying a mirror around wherever you go, seeing yourself and being like, oh, who's that? <laughs> but you'll find that the longer you do this, the more you're gonna start to expect, accept and like yourself. You know, there is a transition period. You know, in the beginning, when we look at ourselves, it's like, uh, who's that guy? But the longer you look, the more it's like, huh, hey, hey, good looking, you know? And that's like, it takes a while, but it's self-acceptance is built from 
being able to accept and to take time to listen to and honor yourself. That means honor your emotions, honor your feelings, and honor your intentions. Never speak dismissively about what you want. Never discredit what you want. Never discredit who you are. Speak with reassurance, with acceptance of yourself and your own needs. This brings us to flow hack number four. Don't scold yourself. Don't talk to yourself like you're a parent that is scolding a child. Don't yell at yourself. Don't get mad at yourself. Don't go like, why, is, why am I so stupid? Or why am I doing this? Or why am I wasting time on this? And why do I keep repeating these patterns? Speak to yourself like you are an adult that is making your own decisions. I made this decision for a reason. I keep going through these patterns for a reason. I have an intention, a value, a purpose with everything I do. What is that intention? What is that value? And why am I doing this? Make yourself conscious of your unconscious. Become aware of what you might not want to be aware of in yourself and recognize that it's not that bad. The shadow is all the things that are true about yourself that you refuse to accept of yourself. But these things are also your authentic self. So if you can discover your shadow, you can also discover how to live a more authentic, and meaningful life. This brings us to flow hack number five. Be just as enthusiastic as you are. What I see is a lot of ENFPs think they're too excited or too enthusiastic or too positive, feel that they have to hold back their energy around other people. But the truth is you don't really need to. The truth is you need to work to a level where you allow yourself to be just as positive as you are while allowing other people to be just as negative as they are. You need to find a comfort in recognizing that not everyone has to be like you, and you don't have to be like everyone else. The truth is, you don't need anyone's permission to be free. You don't need anyone's acceptance or tolerance. You can be free no matter what anyone else thinks. And anyone that questions you or criticizes you or challenges you to be less who you are is a challenge to be more of who you are. Whenever you are faced with criticism or ridicule or uh, <laughs> embarrassment because people are teasing you, you know, just respond with more of yourself. Show them that you, they cannot control who you are. Show them that you are strong and secure in yourself and that no matter what, you're going to be true to who you are. You don't need anyone's permission. You're just going to be yourself and you're going to force everyone to accept you for who you are because they have no choice, because you're gonna be who you are regardless. So these are my five hacks to find flow as an ENFP. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.